Another important advanced capability of CodePeer is its ability to identify race conditions, places where two logical threads of control may potentially update the same shared object potentially at the same time. Unless that object is, let's say, a protected object or a task or atomic or somehow otherwise provide synchronization, then there's a real danger that the program will have what Ada calls erroneous behavior. That is, you can't necessarily predict exactly what will happen, and it may vary from one execution to the next. And CodePeer is able to identify places where that might be occurring, identify the objects that are involved, and so on. As indicated on this slide, there are three kinds of problems that CodePeer looks for when analyzing for race conditions. The most basic is that you have a piece of code and that piece of code is being used potentially by multiple threads simultaneously, multiple tasks. For example, if you have the notion of a task type in Ada, the presumption is you will have multiple instances of that task. In our example of the, of the dining philosophers, we had a task type called person, and we had five instances of it, which were generally executing at the same time. If that so-called reentrant code, code that's being re-entered repeatedly, makes it reference to a global object without holding some sort of lock, then effectively you may have two tasks simultaneously updating or referencing the same global object at the same time. And in ADA that's considered erroneous unless that object has been declared atomic or that object itself is a protected object or somehow otherwise synchronized. So that's sort of the most basic kind of problem that CodePeer looks for. It identifies code that is recognized as potentially being re-entrant, having multiple threads executing simultaneously, and looks for updates to globals. The next kind of problem is where you have two different pieces of code that reference globals. And again, they're not that global is not itself atomic or protected or somehow synchronized. And again, this is a pretty clear situation where if those two tasks can run at the same time, then there's potential for a race condition, which again in ADA is erroneous unless it's properly synchronized. And the final case is a little bit unusual in that it implies that you're using objects that are global and there is a lock associated with them, but they're not actually inside the protected object. They're, let's say, sitting outside the protected object, but there's sort of an assumption that exactly one task reads them, and, uh, and when it does, it has a certain lock and so on. And what CodePeer has determined is that, yes, locks are being used, but different locks are being used so that a single object is not being consistently locked using the same lock. So this is a rather unusual situation where locks are being used but the two tasks happen to use the wrong lock. One of them presumably uses the wrong lock, or maybe they both use the wrong lock, or maybe they have a lock for some totally different reason. And in any case, they're not being consistent. There is some amount of locking going on, but it's not consistent. So this is the third kind of race condition that CodePeer detects. We'll show examples of uh, some of these cases in our Dining Philosopher program. And we'll be going back to that shortly. But first, we'll talk a little bit about the ability to customize these race condition checks to the particular primitives that are used in your environment. Now, not every ADA program uses the standard ADA tasking model because perhaps they're running on an operating system that has a limited set of capabilities. But nevertheless, they may have the ability to do some kind of a mutual exclusion or a lock of some sort. And they may have something that is analogous to a task, some kind of a thread provided by the underlying kernel. You can identify such constructs through pragmas to CodePeer. And with these pragmas, CodePeer can then do the kind of race condition analysis that is built in for protected objects and tasks. It can do it recognizing the entry points that your program has that do correspond to 
the equivalent of a task, the locks that you use that do correspond to effectively protected objects or synchronized objects.